Imagine a scenario where you have a framework for creating simple text documents. Wherever you need to work with documents, you use the methods and functions associated with text documents, and your entire codebase is tightly coupled to text documents. One day, you decide that you need to add the ability to work with the PDF format. You found all the places where you use the text document methods and added conditions to check which of two file formats you are currently using and which function we need to call in which case. A few days later, you decided to add the MOBI and DOC formats as well. And now you see the problem. You don't want to add conditions in every place again. And from this point, you want a universal strategy that works with all existing formats and an easy way to add new formats. This is where the factory method design pattern comes into play. The factory method is a creational design pattern used in software development to create objects using a superclass, allowing superclasses to alter the type of object they create. It provides an interface for creating instances of your class, but delegates the responsibility for creating instances to its subclasses. This pattern is typically used to provide loose coupling and flexibility when creating objects. For example, let's define an interface document with methods for working with documents. Then let's create an interface document factory with the create document factory method. Then for each supported document, let's create implementation of the document factory interface and name them, for example, txt document factory and pdf document factory. Each of these classes implements the create document method to return specific document types. Now, when you want to add a new document format, such as MOBI, you simply create and implement a MOBI document factory class that will return MOBI document objects from the create document factory method, and that's all. Usage is also simple. At the point when you need to interact with the document of specific type, you instantiate the corresponding document factory and later use it to create and manage documents. The code itself will not know exactly which document it's using right now, but it doesn't need to know that, right? There are four main actors in this design pattern. The first one is the factory. Factory is an interface that declares a factory method responsible for creating objects of a particular type. The next one is concrete factory. This is a subclass of factory that implements a factory method for instantiating concrete product classes. The next actor is the product. It is also an interface that defines methods for objects created by a factory method. And the last actor is concrete product, a product subclass that implements the specific functions of the created object. Speaking of benefits, the main one is, of course, the flexibility to introduce new types of products without changing existing client code. What's also good is that this design pattern reduces the coupling between client code and concrete implementations, providing loose coupling, because clients depend on the factory interface rather than concrete classes. Last but not least, the factory method separates object creation from the rest of the code, making it easier to manage changes to the object creation logic. The disadvantages are the following. Creating separate concrete factory classes for each object type can result in more classes, and potentially more complex relationships between them. Additionally, if the logic for creating multiple products is similar, you may end up duplicating code across different implementations of a particular factory. That's all about factory method design pattern. See you in the next video.